That's the craziest thing. You can't define success until you define this one thing. Driven Mofos, welcome back to another episode of The Underestimated Entrepreneur. For those of you who don't know who I am, I am Michael Mojo, the founder of Mojo Human Performance Institute, where we focus on mindset, business, and lifestyle hacking for driven mofos. The reason why I do these episodes is that most people waste their life, and I just don't want you to be one of them. Let's talk about the definition of success. Now, all these people over the years talk about this idea of success, and I hear it all the time. I used to hear it at events, you know, in order to become successful, you need to do these things. Or in order to increase your chances of success, you need to do these things. Well, there are some commonalities that help people to become more successful. That's what I've studied my whole entire career in this field and in this industry pretty much for the last 20 years to figure out what it is that helps someone to become successful. And I've used myself as a crash test dummy to go from a shit kicker who was probably going to get nowhere in life and would probably just end up down the pub most nights and really not do too much with my life. Not that there's anything wrong going to the pub. It's just that I knew that that was going to be probably the place that I wasn't going to achieve the great things that I wanted to achieve in life. And so I started doing a lot of personal development and a lot of personal growth. Now, all these people around me kept telling me about this definition of success. You know, when you do this, you'll become successful. When you make more money, you'll be successful. When you have great relationships, you'll be more successful. When you have a great body, you'll be more successful. When you have a great mindset, you'll be more successful. Now, I'm assuming that you've heard these thoughts and these ideas and this sort of stuff as well. But what I wanted to really talk about is what the definition of success is because most people can't define it. I normally talk to a lot of people every week and I get on the phones and I do some sales calls and I also do you know some calls to the community, especially for our business growth Odyssey attendees. And normally what I find is when I'm calling the general public, people who haven't done our courses before, I'll hear this idea of success like, Michael, I just want to be successful. Or, you know, I just want to achieve more in life so that then I feel successful or so that I can become more successful. But when I ask somebody, what's the definition of success? Like, what does that look like? And why is it important to you? What I find is that most people can't define it. They're like, well, you know, it's I want to have a great family and I want to have a great body and I want to have great health, but I also want great money and I want to be able to travel. What I find is their ideas of success clash. So this happens with most people in society. They have an idea of what success is. I'll give you an example. So I call up someone who has started a business and they're in startup. Let's say they're making half a million to a million dollars a year, but they can't figure out why they can't jump over that next hurdle. Yet at the same time when they're working, they're stressed out all the time. They go, I just need a holiday. I just need a holiday. So all day long, they're thinking about being on holiday. They're not thinking about the pleasure that they're getting from actually owning a business and from the challenges that they go through that's going to make them better in the future. So they see business as being this tension and this stress. So then they go on a holiday for three to four weeks. They know that while they're on holiday, the business is going to operate worse. So they get more and more stressed out while they're away on holidays. They get a couple of emails where someone fucked up an order and this happened and this happened. So they start stressing out more. So now they're on holidays, yet they're stressing out about their business. As I mentioned, while they're at work, they're thinking about holidays. Then they get back and they go back to work and they start cranking out some long hours. And then they feel like they're not a good enough dad or a good enough mum. And so now all of a sudden they've got this tension again of like, if I work too much, then I'm not being a good parent. But if I'm at home too much, then I feel like I'm not working enough and can't provide for my family. So they get in these consistent binds mentally and emotionally where they feel like no matter what they do, they can't win because if they work too much, they're not being a good dad or a good mum. And if they're at home too much, then they feel like they're not going to help their family achieve some sort of financial independence and be able to put the kids through a nice school and give the kids what they want. And then when they're working, they're thinking about holidays. But when they're on holidays, they're thinking about work. So they're always in this tension, this consistent tension. The reason is that they never define what success looks like and what it actually takes to achieve it. The actual definition of success, and this is what I've found over the years of studying a lot of human behavior, is really success can only be defined when you understand someone's values. So I'm going to read a post that I wrote today on my Facebook page. Now, if you're not following along on my Facebook page, jump across. It's Michael Mojo 0 on Facebook. Make sure you hit that like button and follow along. I normally post stuff daily on there, if not a couple of times a day. So what I wrote here was that no one can define success without first defining their values. An individual's idea of success is based on the progression, the enhancement, and the consistent improvement within one's values. To teach the idea of success based on a person's generalized values is a disservice to all who listen. Now, what I mean by that is that those speakers out there who say, When you get more money, then you'll be successful. They're projecting their values onto other people. Now, Sigmund Freud called this an implanted value or what's known as a super ego. So it's essentially the implanted values of others upon another person. Now, when you go to make a decision and you start to think about other people, that's an implanted or an imposed value. 
So let's say that you're a business owner now and you want to make a decision to help grow your business, but you think, shit, this is gonna take more time away from the kids. My wife's gonna be pissed off or my husband's gonna be pissed off. I'm gonna to have to spend money. My business owner's not gonna be happy. When you do that, everyone else is making the decision for you. You're not making your own decision because of those implanted values. Now, the reason why most people are really bad decision makers is because of their implanted values. They worry about everybody else and what everybody else thinks, and they're actually uncertain about what they think. And so most people don't even think about what they think. They think about what everybody else thinks. And most people's decisions aren't based on what they want. They're based on trying to prove something to others or to please others or just to do things for other people. And so that means that they're making decisions based on everybody else, not themselves. Now, that is going to be a massive hindrance for most people. And so most people never, ever live their idea of success because they're always living with these implanted values. And that happens in my industry where speakers get out there and they start telling everybody else what success looks like. And that if they say things like, you know, when you have kids, the most important thing you can do is look after your kids. So what that's doing is it's implanting values on their audience. I hear it quite a lot as well where someone will say, well, you can't have success if you don't have health. That's someone who has a high value of health implanting their values on other people. When I have people in my family who have said, family's number one, family's everything. They're implanting their values, their high value of family onto me. Now, family aren't my highest value, and I've spoken to my family about that. Now, for my mum, she never understood that. But the thing that makes me most fulfilled in life is teaching and learning and connecting with great people. So for me, I feel like I have family everywhere, but my idea of family is different to hers. She feels like family it is close-knit unit, like myself and my sister and my wife, Jess, and my brother-in-law, and my dad, and my niece and nephew, when we all get together, to my mum, that's family. Whereas to me, I have family everywhere. I can travel anywhere in the world and I have family because my family is my community. I see my family, my legitimate family, as being the same as my friends. To me, I just treat everyone like family because to me, they are family. So I don't really see a difference in it. Whereas to her, she sees the difference and my mum notices the difference. If I lived my mum's values, I would feel like I'm stuck and that you know, I wouldn't have the circle of people around me that I do. So it's just everyone has these different ideas around what is valuable in life, and that's our value system. The other problem is, is that most people teach values incorrectly. So I've been to maybe hundreds of personal development events over the years, and the majority of them have no idea what they're talking about. I've only been to one or two where they actually understand values at a, at a correct level. I've been to hundreds of business courses, and they teach about values and the importance of values and understanding values. Yet when they teach it, it's all wrong. And so because of that, it causes implanted values it causes these mental and emotional conflicts. And again, if someone can't make a clear decision and say yes or no, it's because they're overthinking it. And they're overthinking it because of the implanted values in their mind. So normally what I know is when I get on a sales call and someone goes, I know I need to do something. They're saying, I want to do something for myself. And then they come out with the but. But I've got to go and ask my partner. But I've got to go and check with work. I've got to go and what they are, are their implanted values. And so what they're trying to do is to please other people which is normally at the expense of themselves. And this is hard for a lot of people to acknowledge and understand. I'm not gonna be able to go through this heavily in a podcast. That's what I do at my Thrive Time event. But this is so important because this will be the defining factor of most people's idea of success. And most people never even get close to living the life that they could potentially live and achieve the results that they wanna live in life just because they aren't clear on their values and they're not clear on their mission and they're not clear on what they're trying to achieve in life. Most of them have a sort of a generalized idea, but not really clear. Now, that's like driving without a map in life. If you're gonna drive your car and you're just gonna keep driving until you run out of fuel, you could end up anywhere. When you've got a clear map, you know you're gonna to get to the destination. And unfortunately, most people in life have no clear map, so they don't have any clear destination. And so they just keep fucking around and playing around. That's why most people have career changes every couple of years, because they're just trying to figure it out. Most people are trying to, like they'll gain weight, lose weight, because they're just trying to figure it out. Most people are bouncing around between different ideas, different friendship circles, because they're all trying to figure it out. But this is super common in our society. Anyway, I'm gonna keep moving on. To help someone to achieve greater success, a great coach, mentor, or teacher must first define a person's values and give them the tools to live and enhance those values. If not, all it does is lead to self-defeating thoughts and emotions, self-sabotage patterns, and eventually self-defeat. This is the reason why most of society feel like they are never good enough as they try to achieve an idea of success that is not their individual idea of success. It is self-defeating. So be careful who you learn from and look up to. It may be the thing that prevents you from being great. So the whole point and purpose of that post is that if you are unclear on your values, you can never really define what success looks like. If your highest value is family, then to you having a great family is success. That's your idea of success. 
If your idea is having a multinational business and it's a global expansion with tens of thousands of employees, that's your idea of success. If your idea of success is being able to travel the world and not really be restricted and you can just go away whenever you want, then that's your idea of success. But once people start defining it by their own ideological ideas or their own idealisms, they will project that onto other people, which then causes other people to have chaos. Parents do it all the time with their kids. Like if you think about it, you've got to go to school, you've got to get a good education. If you get a good education, then you'll be able to go to university, then you'll be able to get a good job. That's the parent projecting their values onto the child. Now, I'm not saying the school system's not important, but I know many people, many people who come to our business growth odyssey where they were kicked out of school at 13, 14, or they dropped out of school, yet they're running multi-million dollar businesses, traveling all around the world. They drive amazing cars, have amazing houses, and all that sort of stuff. So there is sort of a correlation between doing well at school and achieving great things, but there's also, you know, there's plenty of people out there who achieve great things without having that school system. That's a parent implanting their values on the child. School doesn't necessarily relate to achieving great things in life. There's a whole mindset and mentality around great achievement. Normally, it comes through value systems and people understanding their values. If not, most people go, they go to university or they go get a trade. And then after a while, they go buy a house, they have kids. And then now they're stuck. They're locked in at life. They've got 30-year mortgage. They've got to put their kids through school, which is another 18 years of having to fork out cash. It's scary to jump and leave and go do another career. It's scary to be able to figure out what you want to do in life and then go and do it because you've essentially locked yourself down for 20 to 30 years. So for most people, they're going to waste their life by never really getting clear to define their idea of success. I really believe, and I hope one day, someone comes to my Thrive Time event, and I've had a few people mention this. They come to my Thrive Time event. They work with me and use the tools to then be able to go and teach the frameworks that I have in that event in the school system because it's gonna be the fastest way to help kids achieve what they wanna achieve in life. Just like it's the fastest way to help adults to achieve the things that they want in life. And this is why we've had all different types of people come to that event from you know billionaires, to rich listers, to professional athletes, to Olympians, Com Games champions, to mums, to dads, to small business startups, to people who are fucking lost, to people who've got fresh out of jail. Like I'm talking a week or two straight out of jail, came to Thrive Time. You know, we've had people who have hit rock bottom. We've had, you know, people who have lost everything financially and they find a way and they get there. So we have all different types of people coming along, but it's because they know that without defining what a great life looks like to them and without defining their idea of success and then tapping into their own unique tools, they'll never achieve at the level that they know they have the capacity to achieve. And so we give them all the tools to be able to figure that out. And I just think that it's so important whether you come and do my event or you don't do my event, I don't really care. You know, everyone's adults, I'm assuming listening, you know, you can make your own decisions in life. But the point that I'm trying to make is that if you are unclear of where you're going in life and you do not have a clear map about life, then most people are just gonna waste their own life. It's crazy. And this is where I was and the reason why I built Thrive Time was I was about 25 to 26, had a massive meltdown after doing all this personal development for the previous couple of years. And I just went, shit, I keep learning all this stuff. I still feel like I'm super unsuccessful. I'm not where I wanna be. I feel fucking miserable. I keep hitting rock bottom. I keep getting into all these ruts. I don't know what's going on. Like, I don't know what am I doing wrong? And I had this meltdown and I ended up hopping in a car and heading to a cafe. And I got to the cafe and I just started mapping out all these different tools that I had, all these different things that I'd learned from understanding your mission to your purpose, to getting clear with the value structure and actually understanding values from the field of study of axiology, not from made up personal development, psychology and spirituality, like legitimately diving into it in depth and then figuring out how goals attach off of that and the right goal setting system so that you can align everything together. And then realizing that positive thinking is not the most effective tool for achievement in life, that you need to be balanced and stable and people who love high highs are gonna have low lows. And so the more someone craves positive thinking and being excited and happy and all that shit all the time, the more they're gonna crash and burn out and they're gonna end up in ruts. I see there are so many people on my Facebook page who follow me personally, and I see them, they go to all these personal development events, they're always like on social media, oh, I can't wait to help people, you know, I've started my new coaching program and I'm gonna get out there and I'm gonna do all this stuff. And I see them go hard for like five, six, 10 weeks, and then all of a sudden I don't see them again for a couple of months. Why? Because they've just burnt out, they've hit rock bottom again, they're beating the shit out of themselves, they can't figure it out. But they don't realize that what goes up has to come back down and it's gonna crash. And so if you don't have a way of stabilizing your thought processes and stabilizing your emotions, you will consistently crave high highs and low lows. You'll keep chasing pleasure and you'll keep trying to avoid pain. But the more you do that, the more you end up back in pain. I'll give you a great example of that. I've spoken about this so many times on this podcast, 
But if you try to get away from pain all the time and you use pain as your motivator, your brain will start to create these ideas that pop up throughout the day that you look for immediate gratification. So you might be working, but as you start to get stressed, your brain pops up food. And so you'll start thinking about pizza. You'll start thinking about chocolate. These are impulses. Now, impulses happen as a trigger and a response to fear. So if you've got fears, worries, concerns, when you've got anything that becomes a threat in life or a challenge or a fear or a worry or a concern, your brain will counterbalance it with the idea of an impulse or something that's pleasurable or exciting. So you might be working along, everything's going great, and then you start getting a little bit stressed at work and bang, your brain starts thinking about chocolate or bang, your brain starts thinking about Friday or going on holidays or bang, your brain starts thinking about you know sex or partying or whatever it is. But that's because you're stuck or trapped or you feel stressed or you feel burnt out. So these are counterbalancing responses that happen in the brain that create polarities. So you can see this all the time in society. Like actually every person I've ever worked with when they're impulsive or have impulses, it's always driven from fear or worry or concern. Until you balance that stuff out, it will keep creating cycles. So you can go and get pissed on the weekend and run a mark and have all this fun. But when you do that, it's gonna lead back to fear, worries and concerns because now you're worried about money, you're worried about your health, you've got a hangover, you're worried about your job. So you start worrying again. When you start worrying again, your brain creates another impulse. So now you might be drinking alcohol, but you're starting to eat shit food as well. Then because of the shit food, you start beating yourself up. You feel really bad about yourself. And the more you beat yourself up and feel like crap, the more you create another impulse. And so it creates this vicious cycle. And most people in the personal growth, personal development, psychology space, psychiatry, most of them don't even realize this stuff. And so they keep trying to work on the impulses. Like they go, well, we'll stop the person from having drugs. If we tell them that drugs are bad, you know, Mr. Mackey from South Park, drugs are bad. And so you shouldn't have them. And once an addict, always an addict, and you shouldn't have them. All you're doing is you're taking away the impulse, which is the pleasure, but not dealing with the pain or the stress or the fear or the worry or the concern. If you don't do that, they'll keep impulsing again. So if they don't take up drugs again, they'll take up drinking or they'll take up overspending or they'll take up something in order to replace the pleasure from the pain or the worry and the concern that they're trying to get away from. This here creates vicious cycles. This is why I came up with one of the world's most advanced mental and emotional balancing tools called the Process of Potential that I teach at Thrive Time and to all of our Thrive Time attendees because that tool you're gonna to need for the rest of your life. Once you start getting stressed and fear and worry and concern, you know that if you go and balance out your brain again, bang, you'll get back to it, you won't impulse and you won't go through those vicious cycles, you'll crack the pattern. And so you just need to keep chipping away at that and working through it. But what tends to happen is that the majority of society just go, well, I need more pleasure, I need more positivity, I need more happiness. Then they go and chase it or more freedom. And what they don't realize is it just creates a big circle and they end up coming back to that same place. This is the reason why it's so easy to sell financial freedom because most people are so trapped financially. If you're trapped and that causes worry and fear and concern, the opposing part of that in your brain is trying to create freedom. So when someone says to me, you know, Michael, I just want financial freedom. I already know that they're financially trapped because someone who is financially intelligent knows that you can't have financial freedom without being financially trapped and you can't be trapped without having freedom. There's both of those two sides. So for me, I don't even give a shit about financial freedom. I just consistently care about financial growth because I love seeing the growth in my finances. I don't really care about being free because I am free, but at the same time, I'm also trapped. So like doing these podcasts, I do a podcast a day every day. For me, that's freeing because I love it. I love to do this stuff. But at the same time, it traps me because I've got to do a podcast every day. So you get both. You can't have one without the other. And intelligent people realize this, but when you're stuck in a vicious cycle and you're going around in circles or these patterns of behavior, you just stay stuck. So anyway, my point is that if you're looking for success, your success comes from your values and the clearer you can define what your values really are, the easier it is to understand what success looks like, which then means you've got a greater chance of actually feeling successful. And so a lot of people that I work with over the years and who've come and done Thrive Time, once you define your idea of success and start to balance out your mindset and your emotions, once you do that, over a period of time, you just go, I am successful. It doesn't matter whether I have problems or pain or stress. Like I get to do what I love every day. Yes, there is always problems. There's always stresses, there's fears, there's worries, there's concerns, but there's also pleasure. It's good, it's bad. Like you experience the whole spectrum of emotions throughout a day. So you just get on with it and just get it done. But you don't have high highs, but you don't have low lows. So it's just like you just cruise. And life gets so much more fulfilling because you get a lot more momentum which also means that results compound. When I speak to a lot of people at events and I'm like, well, you don't have to have high highs. They're like, yeah, but I love like getting excited and all that. And I'm like, well, that's cool, but there's consequences. If you get excited and you become hyperactive, you also become hypoactive and you'll burn out. So when you're excited and you're highly energized, eventually you'll burn out. 
if you can stabilize those two and you just have this consistent productivity, you don't burn out, but you also don't have a high burn rate. You just sort of get shit done and you prioritize and you plan things effectively. So the greatest achievers on the planet normally behave like this. But the problem is, is that most people are stuck in those vicious cycles and because they're in pain, they want pleasure. When they're being challenged, they want ease and comfort. And this is why a lot of people will also say, you know, I just want a comfortable life. That's because they consistently live in discomfort or their idea of life makes them uncomfortable. So you have to really define your values in order to define success so that then you can live the life that you love. And it's one of the greatest gifts that I've been able to give people in life is that when you get clear on your life map and the three pillars that I teach at Thrive Time, you'll be on fucking fire. Like literally, most people would have never experienced the feeling of being super productive and just achieving things consistently. Most people go through and they'll have growth spurts and then they'll crash and they'll burn and they'll sabotage and they'll self-destruct, then they'll go again. And if you look at gyms, gyms are a perfect example of this, where people go to the gym, they work really, really hard, they stick on a strict diet, they lose all this weight. Later, they're fat again, they're overweight, they hate themselves, they're beating themselves up, they hop back into the gym again, off they go back on that cycle again. And that's because they've never really defined how health fits into their values and how health has helped them to have the lifestyle that they want. They haven't defined that yet because they haven't defined their values. Anyway, Driven Mofos, I hope that this helps. If you're loving these podcasts, please remember to subscribe and also share or follow along on whatever platform you're on. And also to all those out there who have been sharing this podcast, I really do appreciate it. It's been awesome to watch my social media channels light up lately and to see so many people sharing this or screenshotting that they're watching it and then tagging me in it. I really do appreciate it. You know, a lot of the time I would have sent some of you messages and said thank you. It's really cool and I really do appreciate it. And normally what I do as well is I keep an eye out on who's sharing stuff, who's liking stuff, because I know if someone comes to one of my events, I'm probably gonna hang out with them more if they are helping me to achieve my goals and my dreams versus the fucking hundred other people every week that send me messages that God love to catch up which they never think about what I'm trying to achieve. Some people send me messages. They don't even know I got a podcast or run events. They just want to hang out because I got a cool car or whatever. I don't know. You know, I always look after those who help me to achieve my dreams and goals because I think if I can help other people achieve their dreams and goals, I hope other people help me to achieve my dreams and goals as well. So that's why I share this stuff. I just want everyone to keep thriving and keep doing great things. So I really do appreciate everyone who's sharing this stuff as well. It makes a massive difference, not only in my life, but also to the people that you share this with, and I hope you know it's making massive difference to your life as well. Anyway, Driven Mofos, have a great day. Keep kicking massive goals, and I look forward to seeing you on here on the next episode.